I would say based on a little bit of funky calculations, I would hover somewhere around 22,400 nanograms per deciliter, which is higher than an Asian elephant housed in a zoo. And still, I would have to do additional testing for that. I have to go back on cycle of 2000 milligrams testosterone anthate per week. Now, a spotted hyena, one of the animals with, I believe, the, the biggest bite force out of all the animals on the planet, measuring that against crocodiles and some of the other animals, their total testosterone levels are very similar to humans. 30 nanograms per deciliter to 1,050 nanograms per deciliter with a mean level of 400 nanograms per deciliter. So this is very, very close. Doesn't mean that you get to bite into things left and right and show your dominance. Still, it's um, quite familiar numbers to see after doing all of this research. Going further down the list, an elephant. This is actually very interesting because the highest recorded must of a male Asian elephant housed at the Dixon Park Zoo in Springfield, Missouri, United States of America was 16,000 nanograms per deciliter. For people who are not familiar with musk, it's basically, you know, when the male animals go into a super heat, super aggressive mode, where they feel super dominant because their total testosterone levels go mega, mega high, and they start secreting all of these oils and they go completely ballistic. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people that live in countries with elephants know exactly when to avoid the animals because they go completely nuts. Comparing Asian elephants to African elephants, you see that during non must so this is the normal off-season, so to say, the mean total testosterone concentration of an Asian elephant is 261 nanograms per deciliter, but for an African elephant, it's only 5.3 nanograms per deciliter. And during must, an Asian elephant has a mean total testosterone concentration of 2,610 nanograms per deciliter. So this is actually 10 times higher. And it seems very familiar when you compare 261 to 2,610 nanograms per deciliter, but that's what I was able to determine from the scientific literature. You see that the ranges are quite different. So during must of an Asian elephant, it might go up to 4,000 nanograms per deciliter. And when you compare that to the African elephants during must, they have a mean, a total testosterone concentration of 664 nanograms per deciliter. So that's significantly less. So for all of you Asians and Africans who like to play the comparison game regarding masculinity, in this unique instance, the Asian elephant wins, especially when kept in captivity, 16,000 nanograms per deciliter. I wonder how much testosterone I would need to inject to get 16,000 nanograms per deciliter. The problem with the reference ranges here in humans, unless you go to a specific lab, there's a cutoff. So for me, for example, if I do my blood work results, I can go up to 3,500 nanograms per deciliter, regardless of the amount of testosterone that I inject. And then above that, they don't register it, right? The, the machine probably explodes because the total testosterone levels are over 9,000. So when I did my cycle of 2,000 uh, milligrams testosterone anthate per week, I had no idea where my serum testosterone concentrations were. But if I were to multiply, you know, what I was able to get on one ampule of testosterone, 250 milligrams per week, uh, getting a total testosterone concentration of about 2,800 nanograms per deciliter the day after a single administration, I would say based on a little bit of funky calculations, I would hover somewhere around 22,400 nanograms per deciliter, which is higher than an Asian elephant housed in a zoo. Still, I would have to do additional testing for that. I have to go back on cycle of 2000 milligrams testosterone anthate per week, and then fly to another country where they have the testing equipment to actually determine if my total testosterone levels are actually that freaking high. Still, it was probably the best cycle I ever did. So for the animals that have super high total testosterone levels, Steve can relate. A domesticated rabbit has a mean total testosterone level of 256 nanograms per deciliter. And most of the domesticated animals actually have similar total testosterone levels of around 200 to 250 nanograms per deciliter. A southern elephant seal, which is a huge seal, the biggest seal you'd be able to find on this planet. And it's a very funny comparison when you compare the male elephant seal to a female elephant seal. The male is so big. <laughs> that they literally squash the females during intercourse. It's uh, quite obscene. Don't do what the southern elephant seals do. Don't get morbidly obese. Don't get sleep apnea while you're still awake because you're that fat. Still, the total testosterone levels range from 50 to 1700 nanograms per deciliter during the mating season. 
with a mean of only, that the majority of the year, 237.5 nanograms per deciliter. So again, during the mating season, your total testosterone levels might be super, super high, close to super physiological TRT++, I would say. But is it worth it, you know, when you have that body type? I would say not. Deer also go very, very high. There was a lot of data about white-tailed deer, and it's probably because white-tailed deer are generally hunted in a lot of countries all over the world. And the scientific literature goes back really, really far. So during older studies of the 1970s and 1980s, during the mating season, they were able to determine that serum concentrations of the white-tailed deer range anywhere between 1,330 to 2,432 nanograms per deciliter. Still, when you put all of the scientific evidence together, the mean total testosterone levels of white-tailed deer are 221.3 nanograms per deciliter, which is significantly less compared to red deer with a mean level of 352.7 nanograms per deciliter. Still, the deer rank quite high, I would say, certainly higher than a rhinoceros. Also a big surprise to me. And what was funny about this study, and again, it's linked down below, guys, if you want to read it for yourself. In this study, they compared black rhinoceros versus white rhinoceros and assessed their total testosterone concentrations based on how many females were present and also how many males were present. So it seems that total testosterone levels go higher as there's more females or males around, meaning that they can have more uh, sexual partners and probably more uh, other males to spar with and assess their dominance over. So when there's more than three females present, which is where the highest testosterone levels were observed, the black rhinoceros has a level of 61 to 178 nanograms per deciliter and a white rhinoceros is a little bit higher, 94.5 to 223.4 nanograms per deciliter. Again, only when there's three females present, when there's no females present, these total testosterone levels are significantly lower. Same for no other males present, very low total testosterone concentration. So if you're a rhino, you identify with a rhino, make sure you have a big social circle. This way, you have the highest total testosterone levels, still far lower than humans. And I found an interesting study that showed that the dehorning of a male rhinoceros only affects fecal testosterone concentrations in negligible amounts. Now, this doesn't make it right to go around, start dehorning a rhinoceros because you know that their total testosterone concentrations are going to stay the same, right? You still need your weapon, your primary source of masculinity to show dominance over the other males. So I don't think that's the right thing to do for, you know, the trinket markets. Or even worse, you know, as a male a libido enhancer, which is uh, usually where these horns end up at. So please, hopefully, this video can make you put an end to that. And if not, you're a total scumbag. Moving on. A cock has a total testosterone concentration, a mean total testosterone concentration of 122.2 nanograms per deciliter. We're talking about roosters, hens, male chickens, that is. So yes, you can pull that joke. Somebody asks you, what is your total testosterone concentration? Well, you can say, my cock, assuming you have one at home, has a mean testosterone concentration of 122.2 nanograms per deciliter. Still quite low. You could say that your cock is androgen deficient. A grizzly bear ranges from 10 nanograms per deciliter to 112.5 nanograms per deciliter. And it seems that salmon availability and consumption actually lowers serum testosterone levels. So there could be a fluctuations revolving around the mating season or simply meaning that if you solely eat salmon in your diets, assuming you're a grizzly bear, this is not good for your total testosterone levels. So even though it looks good on paper to eat a lot of salmon, if you only eat salmon, that's no bueno. An African lion, even lower. 46 to 144 nanograms per deciliter with a mean total testosterone level of only 96. 96 nanograms per deciliter for all of you guys who identify as a lion. 96 nanograms per deciliter, man. My heart is broken, honestly, because I think lions are alpha as fuck. But with this total testosterone level, assuming that these studies are correct, you know, pitiful, I would say. Still, lions are very strong, very alpha. If you were to meet a lion and your experience point shows that you have 1500 nanograms per deciliter in your serum and the lion only has 96, or maybe up to 144 nanograms per deciliter. Guess what? Lion wins. Indian leopards, a little bit higher ranges than the African lion, but still the mean level is a little bit lower, 80 
9.4 nanograms per deciliter, which is actually very close to domesticated cats with a mean total testosterone concentration of 83.0 nanograms per deciliter. Now, keep in mind that the studies performed on African lions and Indian leopards were all done in captivity. I'm assuming that it's never been done in the wild, or at least I wasn't able to find these studies performed in the wild. So could be, you know, a logical conclusion because who wants to be the guy that goes out into the wild starting taking samples, blood samples of lions and leopards, praying to whatever religion they believe in that they're not going to get maimed. So lions, leopards, and domesticated cats, quite close. Subclinical androgen deficient levels compared to humans, but again, for them, it seems to work quite well. And then the lowest on this list, something I didn't expect, is a wolf. And it seems that free roaming wolves, wild wolves, have a lower testosterone concentration than wolves in captivity. And it's probably due to a high stress environment, right? A lot of competition amongst the wolves, even though they're pack animals, there must be a lot of different groups of wolves trying to compete for the same area. So free roaming wolves have a total testosterone level of 0.8 to 351.6 nanograms per deciliter during the mating season, right? The higher levels are all during the mating season, but the mean total testosterone is only 33.0 nanograms per deciliter. And compare that to wolves in captivity, they have 137.5 nanograms per deciliter, probably because they're lives are a little bit less stressful compared to the free roaming wolves. So this is what I was able to piece together with a couple days of research. Still, this list is far from complete. Again, I wasn't able to determine the total testosterone levels of a hippopotamus, for example. There was only studies performed on fecal matter, probably because hippopotamus are mad deadly, probably one of the deadliest animals in Africa, from what I remember uh, doing research on the deadliest animals on the world. A giraffe I wasn't able to determine and now I realized that I completely forgot about the crocodiles you know the Nile crocodiles are probably full with testosterone but I'll do a little bit of research and overlay that on the screen I'll rank them accordingly if I can find the data if I forgot or missed your favorite animal my sincere apologies feel free to contribute to this video down below in the YouTube comment section and if you are a little bit disappointed like I was that a silverback gorilla or a grizzly bear or a rhinoceros or a wolf has very low total testosterone levels, don't be disappointed. It just means that you can one-up them, not in a fight, but if you were to sit in a group and you were all going to do your blood work analysis, then you can show that your total testosterone levels are much higher than theirs. You're still going to get devoured if you were to end up in a fight with one of these animals. So I'll leave it here, guys. This was a very fun video to kind of piece together. I had a lot of fun doing research for this one. Hopefully it gives some traction here on YouTube because it's a very, very, very niche content. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. All of my sponsors and affiliates are there. And if they are not there, you can find them on my website, vigorsteve.com. I'm always available for consultations. You can find the rates on my website as well. If you need some personalized advice to raise your total testosterone levels by any means necessary, I got your back. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Not quite silverback gorilla, but it's actually closer to a royal Bengal tiger. And this is where I got all those stretch marks from, right? Wrestling with royal Bengal tigers. See you guys in the next video.